Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we're on the 14th episode of the Endless Runner series, and in this episode, we'll take a look on how to implement two new items Sea Heart, which will increase the amount of lies that we have in each playthrough, and Pirate Slack, which will increase the chance for booties to spoon. First, we're going to make the items in the shop, then, we're going to implement the extra life effect and make an animation to show it, and then we're going to implement the extra booty item. This tutorial series is based on a game that I've already made and published called Boat Venture. You can play Boat Venture for free on the Play Store for all Android devices 9 Plus. Alright, so let's start. I'm gonna go in the canvas and duplicate these two items in here and change the anchors and names. Okay, and do note that now this is item 1, then 2, 3, and 4. Now let's select one of the slot panels and let's go into shop item class. And in here we just need to make two new enums for our shop items. So first one's gonna be Pirate Slack and second it's gonna be Sea Heart. Back to Unity. I'm gonna select the slot panel 2 and set it to Pirate Slack and also change the name. And for slot panel 4, I'm gonna say that it's the Sea Heart. I'm also going to change the sprites for these images with some that I've made myself. You can download them for free, link in the description. Also, another thing we can do for clarity is change all the names from item name to the actual name of the item. Ok, and that's it for the item parts in the shop. Now let's implement Seahart. And to do that, we're going to go into the boot collision script. In here for now we just finish the game when we collide with an enemy entity. Instead, what we want to do is put a lights system. To do that, let's make a new int value called lights. I'm also gonna serialize it for debugging and set its default value to 1. Then let's make a new function called onHitEnemy. In this function we first detract from our current lives and then we check if our lives are equal to 0. And because we'll be calling this function in the trigger function, it could happen that we're gonna hit two enemies at once and our lives are gonna go to minus one. So as a safety net, let's say equals or less than zero. And if you go in here, it means we have lost, so we are gonna call the finish game manager. Else, if we still have some lives left, we are gonna fire an animation. Let's call the on hit enemy in here. And finally, we need to increase our lives determined by the C heart level in the shop. To do that, let's make a start script function. In here, we just increase our lies with the player path of the item type. We also want to call this function from the start game manager, so let's make a singleton of boot collision. And let's go to the start game manager and let's call start script. And I'm just gonna call it after boot movement. Ok, and let's see if it works in Unity. Right now as you can see I have one life, but if I hit play and get a sea heart, when I actually play it goes to 2, and if I hit a rock, you can see that my lives goes to 1, but I don't die, and when they go to 0, I lose. Very good. Ok, now let's make the animation that shows when we have hit something, and in that animation we're also gonna slow down time and make the player invincible. So let's go back to our boat collision script, and in here, let's make a new function called onLostLife without losing. And we are gonna call it here. In this function, we actually want to do a lot of things, so let me write them down. Okay, so we want to slow down time so the player can have a bit of a breathing room to rethink what's happening. We also want to make the player invulnerable during that time. We also want to make an animation for the boot, so like a flicker effect to show that it's actually invulnerable, and a heart animation, and that's just gonna be a heart that slowly fits out to show that you've lost a life. And finally, after a bit of a timer, we're gonna reset everything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is making the player invulnerable. And to do that, we're gonna use layers. Layers are a set of rules that determine which objects can interact with each objects. So in this function, we're just going to say that during this invulnerable time, our boot is going to be on a layer that can't interact with the enemy layers. To do that, let's go to Unity, let's select our boot, 
and in here as you can see your layer right now is default if you click in here we have some preset layers by unity what we want to do is make a new layer and i'm going to call this new layer player ghost and then we make another layer for our enemies and then we can just say that player ghost interacts with default layer so it can interact with treasure but it can't interact with enemies so it can be hit again while it's invulnerable to change the rules of this layer we have to go in the project settings and select physics 2d make sure we are in 2d and not normal physics in here we have a matrix that says which layers interact with each other we're just gonna say that player ghost can't interact with enemies so this marked right here and that's it for the project settings now let's go back to the script to change the layer of game object it's really simple we just say game object dot layer and then we say the number of the layer that we want and in our case player ghost is the number eight then when we reset everything we just set the game object layer back to zero so that's one thing gone the next thing i want to do is the waiting time and to do that we are going to use curtains and curtains are a type of function that waits a certain period of time before executing all of its code to use curtains we change the type of a function from void to i enumerator and i enumerator uses the system collection library and to call a coroutine, we say start coroutine and in between brackets the function I want to call. Just like so. And as you may see, we still have an error though. And that is because much like a game object function can't be run if you don't return a game object, a coroutine function can't run if you don't return an i enumerator. And returning an i enumerator is what makes the function stop and resume later on. To do that, we use this syntax right here. Yield return means that we want to return an i enumerator, while new wait for seconds, we are making a new class of type wait for seconds that makes the code stop for one second. There are different ways to stop time with curtains, but most of the time you're just gonna use this syntax right here. We can actually already test it in Unity, so let's go and see that. And let me also change the waiting time from one second to say four. And let's go back to Unity. In here, we need to make sure to put all our enemies in the layer enemy. So for the rock, we can just change this game object. So for the octopus entity, it's a bit different because we have children. What we want to do is select the parent and change the layer. And Unity is gonna ask us whether we want to change the layer for the children too. Just say yes, and we're good. Now let's test it and let's see how it all works out. As you can see, I have two lies. When I hit a rock though, I go to player ghost and I become immune to other rocks. After a while, my layer goes back to default and I can hit rocks again. Very good. Back to our collision script. We can cancel this and let's start working on the boat animation. And for this animation, we're just gonna use the code. We're not actually gonna use an animator. To get that flicker effect, we're just gonna disable and enable the sprite renderer with some time in between. So first, let's make a reference to our sprite renderer and let's get a component in the awake method. Now for animation, we're gonna use a while loop. And in here we pick our sprite renderer, disable it and enable it. And we're gonna take this waiting time and put it in our while loop. And we also have to duplicate it and put it right before we go to the next iteration of the while loop. Now this while loop is gonna be very similar to a for loop. That is, we want to make a new value on the fly. And then we're gonna run this while loop as soon as i is less than a certain amount and add i to each iteration. This while loop is gonna trigger four times, and for four times we're gonna disable and enable our sprite renderer and wait four seconds in between. Of course, four seconds is a lot, so I'm actually gonna change it to 0.25. And that's gonna give us a flicker effect that tells the player the notion that he's invulnerable. So we can take this out, and for the next thing, we're gonna slow down time. This is really simple, we just set the time scale from one to 0.5, and when we reset everything, we just set it back to 1. Do note that wait for seconds work with scale time. So instead of waiting for a quarter of a second, we're actually going to wait for half a second. So instead of saying 0 0.25, I'm going to say 0 0.125. OK, and let's see how it looks in Unity. Pretty good. Although one thing you may have seen is the background looks a bit weird right now. That is because we are slowing down time, so our boat goes slower and the entities do. 
but the background doesn't move this scale time. We can actually fix this real quickly, so let's go grab our background and let's select the move to words component. In here, if you remember, we used a function called move to words to move our background, and move to words requires a speed variable to work. So instead of just feeding our speed variable, we just say speed times time dot scale. And there we go, we fixed that. Now let's go back to our boot collision script and we can remove this here. And of course you can change how much you slow down time, how long it's between one flicker and one other. Of course it's all up to you. I think the flicker is good. I think the only issue is that it's a bit too slow, the overall animation, or rather it's a bit too short. So I'm gonna increase it from four to eight. And now let's move on to the hard animation. This animation is really simple. We're just gonna duplicate the one that we already made for the bonus item. So let's go to Unity. And here I have the prefab for our bonus item animation. I'm just gonna duplicate it, change the name to something else and change the sprite. Okay, and uh, back to our collision script. Let's make reference to this prefab. Now we just need to instantiate this prefab and destroy it after a while. Make sure that you spawn the animation before you do the flickering effect and also that you saw it right after with a bit of delay. And do note that destroy also works with scale time, so when we say that we want to destroy it after 2 seconds, we're actually going to destroy it after 4 seconds of real time. But that shouldn't really matter. Also make sure that when you use the destroy function, you're destroying the game object that you just spawned and are not destroying the prefab. For the position, we set it to our current transform position, so to our player and quaternion identity. Okay, so we can remove this, and I think we also can remove this, because I think we are done for this function. Okay, and the only thing left is go back to Unity and put our prefab in its location. And test it out. Okay, so it works, and it's a bit smaller than I thought it would be, but honestly, I like it like that. Okay, and for the next part of the video, we're gonna implement the pirate slack effect. And we're gonna do that in the getMob manager script. We want the pirate slack effect to change how likely it is to spawn booties rather than enemies. But right now we don't really differentiate between these two types of entities, so let's do that. First, let's make a new private in value called chance to spawn booty. Let's also serialize it and set the default value to 50. And now in our getMob function, before we do any of this stuff, we decide whether we are gonna spawn a booty or an entity. To do that, let's pull a random float number between 1 and 100. And I'm gonna name it random number to choose between booty or enemy. And then we just look if this number that we just picked is less or equal to the chance for spawning booty. If it is less than the chance, so if you do spawn a booty, then we just return the first game object in our entities prefabs, which is the treasure. And because we have an out parameter, we also have to set it to a certain value before we exit the function. So we're just gonna say that is octopus is false. Now we just need to change this value, the chance to spawn booty, and to do that we're gonna make a new start script function. In here we just add to chance to spawn booty based on the player pref of the item pirate slack. In my game I made it so that the maximum level of the item is 10 but the actual effect is half a percent for each level. To do that, we just divide this value by two and cast the player path into a float. And let's also change the chance to spawn booty from int to float. Last thing that we need to do is, if we don't spawn a booty, is instead of picking a random entity in our entities prefab, we skip the first element. So instead of picking from zero to the maximum, we say from one to the maximum. Of course, it isn't very efficient, or rather it's not very clear and organized, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna change it later on anyway. As you may have guessed, this function, the getMob, and the way we spawn things is the hardest part in our game. So yes, this function isn't done yet, we're gonna evolve it later, in the next episodes. Also one thing, because we're using float numbers, instead of 1 to 101, as we would with integer, instead we pick from 1 to 100. Okay, and the only thing left is to go in the start game manager, let's call this new site script function. And let's see if it works in Unity. 
Right now I have 50% chance of spawning booty. With Pirate Track at level 3, I go to 51.5. And of course it's not going to be very noticeable, but let me pump it up to 100. And now we're going to only spawn booties. And if I change the value to 0, we're only going to spawn enemies. Perfect. Alright, so that's it for this video. Hope you've learned something new. If you have any doubts about the code or any suggestions about our next topic that you'd like to see, do tell me in the comments. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. In the next episode, we'll take a look on how to implement advertisement. And advertisement is an extremely important part of mobile gaming. That is because most people are not keen to actually pay money to play a mobile game, so we have to rely on ads. We're gonna make a reward video, so if you watch a video in the shop, you're gonna get some extra money and a play again ad. So when you lose a game, you have the chance to watch a video ad, and if you do, you get an extra life. These two types of advertisement are the most popular and most efficient. So make sure to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.